Hey, it's Trey Benson with the Arizona Cardinals, and you listen to Fantasy Football Council. Welcome to the show, guys. Happy Thursday. Got an exciting video here for you, whether you're in the car commuting or whether you're on YouTube, wherever you are, this is a good one here. We are doing the final mock draft. The first five rounds hammered out perfectly for you and drafting from that very unique eighth position. Because a lot of people ask me, Joe, you like to go running back. Well, you don't get CMC. You don't get Bijan. You don't get Brees Hall typically at the eighth pick. What do you do? And what do you do coming back? And how do you build the first five picks so you have a solid foundation for your draft? Now, I know a lot of people have already drafted. And I know some people, a lot more people still have to draft this weekend. I know a lot of people draft this Labor Day weekend. So, guys, we also do year-long content here on this channel. So make sure you guys do subscribe, turn on the bell. Waiver wire starts and sits, breaking NFL news. We are pumping out content here daily. So make sure you guys turn on the bell, smash it, tap it, slap it, guys. Hit the thumbs up, guys. Very, very important. It's going to really guys help you guys win your league. So we're doing a fantasy football mock draft. Again, this is a simulation. I'm going to give you guys a ton of analysis, a ton of golden nuggets, And if you already drafted, you're still going to get a ton of value listening to this podcast here because I'm going to talk about, obviously, some breaking news here to start the show with Breaking Brad, but also just the relevance of some certain players, some things that are moving. Should you draft them? Should you trade for some of these guys? So as I'm giving analysis about these players, you got to start thinking like, okay, well, maybe I don't have this guy on my team. Maybe I should get rid of him before the season starts or something like that. Spark a trade because this guy could bust this year. So I'm going to make you guys think, get those neurons firing, get you guys ready for this season with the final fantasy football mock draft. Again, before I get into this, guys, hit the thumbs up and grab the 16-round draft solution. It's literally going to give you guys the championship on a silver platter. Once you guys sign up, you're going to get an email. You get to log in and get access to all of my optimal players. Draft each round, principal, cheat sheet, Full mock draft, just like this, but full mock draft explaining everything, laying out all the sleepers for you, all the late round steals. And believe it or not, your casual league mates won't even know what hit them because this is analysis and advice that nobody else has given out. So make sure you guys do grab 16 rounds. You'll be light years ahead of the sheep, a.k.a. they can sheep this in your league, all right? All right, let's dive into this, guys. Before we do, we're going to start with some breaking news here. Uh, with Breaking Brad, where are you? We now have breaking news. Some people are asking me, like, Joe, that guy needs a t-shirt. And I'm thinking to myself, we don't even know what he looks like. Well, I know what he looks like. I see him every day in the studio, but you guys don't know what he looks like. So maybe one day, kind of like the smash it, tap it, slap it shirts, by the way, you can get them below. Just like those shirts, maybe we need to do a t-shirt for Breaking Brad. So one day, Breaking Brad will do a t-shirt. What do you think? Should we do a t-shirt for you, Breaking Brad? What do you think? We now have breaking news. Let us know in the comments. I want to know what you think Breaking Brad looks like. Love to, compare him to like an actor or like something, right? Maybe he looks like Ron Burgundy or whatever. I think Jim was saying, right? Uh, it looks like an anchor man, or maybe he looks like Jim Carrey. I don't know. You guys let me know, Breaking Brad, what do you think he looks like? Okay, maybe we'll do a t-shirt, all right? All right, let's talk. Again, breaking news. We record this the night before, so it's there for you guys, 7 a.m., uh, a couple of things I want to highlight here. Uh, Brandon Ayuk did not participate on Wednesday, okay? I mean, I don't even know how long this drama is going to go on. I mean, he's eventually got to play. It looks like he's going to play on the 49ers. I mean, this guy is so picky, just so self-centered. Uh, again, he's good. He's just not that good. He's not like C.D. Lamb good, right? And this guy wants mega deals. He had like $32 million offered by the Patriots, just denied it. And now he's back with the 49ers by the looks of it. So, I, again, just a big-time diva. Very, very annoying. I would hate to have him on my team. It would be really annoying. So, Brandon Ayuk, uh, yeah, just not practicing, okay? Uh, not participating in practice. Uh, a couple of things yesterday, again, that happened. Russell Wilson is the team starter. This is not a surprise. I never thought that he would not start. You would, you would maybe think maybe Fields outperforms him based on youth, right? Like, But, no, Russell Wilson's a veteran. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to win jobs. He's the starter. Unless he catastrophically he throws a lot of interceptions or starts losing. He's like, oh, and three. I don't see him losing this job. Justin Fields, you know, years to wow us. We're not wowed. Um, I think Fields eventually might get something this year. I don't know. Maybe they might put him on a couple of plays, but you know, I, I don't know. I'm just not sold on Fields being a good quarterback. So um, congratulations, Russell Wilson. You're starting for the Steelers. Good, good news for everybody around him for fantasy. And also one more thing I want to talk about. Dalvin Cook agreed to an undisclosed deal to the Dallas Cowboys on Wednesday, which was yesterday. Uh, and again, I, I 
this is really annoying. The Cowboys are so annoying because they screw up this whole wide receiver or running back committee, and it, it's a disaster. I didn't like it before. I, I don't like it now even more. You know, Zeke, Dowdle, Dalvin Cook, disaster. Now, apparently, he's on the practice squad at the time of this recording, and I, I don't know, man. This guy, I didn't even think he's going to get signed. Who the heck wants a washed-up running back? But apparently, these guys like washed-up running backs. The Cowboys, terrible organization. These, cause, these guys could have just forego all this garbage, bringing these washed-up guys, and just drafted or acquired a solid rookie. Like, for example, Frank Gard, Frank Gord Jr. got released by the Bills and got re-signed to their practice squad, I believe. Like I would just, and he did really good in preseason. I think he broke the records, Frank Gore Jr., for like most rushing yards by a running back in preseason. I think he had 163 yards over a couple of games, something like that. But anyway, like I would bring in a hungry young guy like that, or acquire Trey Benson, or trade, you know, should, should draft maybe a Trey Benson, have him start from day one and let him be the workhorse. The same thing they did with Zeke back in whatever 2016 when he was drafted, right? So anyway, it's a disaster. Stay away from fantasy football. Now, I do like Jake Ferguson on this roster and CeeDee Lamb, but, you know, running backs, absolute disaster. All right, shot of water there. Okay, so uh, let's let's go. Let's get right to it here. Let's get to this mock draft here. Again, if you haven't got 60 rounds, go grab it right now. All right, so here's the simulation here. I'm going to pull it up. Now, we are drafting from the eighth pick. So what do you do from the eighth pick? Now, if you're in the car, let's let's have a conversation. You don't have the visual in front of you, so we're going to have a, a talk here. Uh, so Christian McCaffrey, typical standard consensus, first overall pick. Brees Hall, Tyree Kill, CeeDee Lamb, Bijan, Jamar Chase, Amon Ra. You're on the clock. you got a couple options. Let's take a look at what the options are in a one-quarterback league, 12-person drafting from the eighth pick. we got Justin Jefferson, who's got Sam Darnold throwing to him. I, get, I just don't see Sam Darnold. It's not a lot of people saying, well, you know, Darnold is backs against the wall. He's got to do well. I just don't see Sam Darnold, a guy who's had years to wow us, we're not wow, just all of a sudden turning into Pat Mahomes or turning into a guy that's going to be viable. Now, there's this whole debate that, like, I don't know what the exact stat is off the top of my head, but it's like 24 fantasy points per game with Nick Mullins throwing the ball to Jefferson last year. Again, volume could be there. Jefferson could still be good. I get, I just don't like going wide receiver round one. And if I do, I like to go for like an upside guy, maybe like a Garrett Wilson or something like that. I just see more upside there with Garrett Wilson and the trusty Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball. Okay. And they've got good running backs there that are going to really demand some stacked boxes there, some attention. Um, whereas Justin Jefferson has nobody else. He's going to see a lot of double coverage. They've got, who do they got? They don't have a running back. Aaron Jones is not a running back. He's not good. I don't know what to tell you. He's not good. Ty, Ty Chandler, whatever he's there, not good. Okay, so again, Jefferson's there. I, I, I don't like it. I don't trust it. I don't, I, it is what it is. Uh, A.J. Brown's safe. Garrett Wilson. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, you know, I think Sa Saquon Barkley is the best option here. Again, you guys can make your decision, have your convictions, but Saquon Barkley is literally in a make or break season. Chip on his shoulder, uh, he's got to get it done. He's had a lot of criticism over the years, being on a bad team, finally a good team, good O-line. Again, the big concern here with Saquon is obviously Jalen Hurts getting a lot of that goal line work. Again, there's no safety in round one. Guys, there's never any safety, right? You just want to try to make your safest pick possible. And it was Saquon. There's no running back committee other than Jalen Hurts. But I think they're going to alleviate the pressure off Hurts. You know, no Kelsey there. Less tush push, more Barkley near that goal line. I get, I like Barkley. I'm going to go ahead and acquire him because he's the only workhorse here that I love. Now, Taylor, he's done nothing in the past couple years. This is what you got to be careful with with these early round running backs. You got to try to grab somebody with minimal amount of red flags. Now you can say Saquon's got minimal, uh, he's got some red flags. Again, Hurts being one of them, injury pass, yada, yada, yada. But again, I explained the reasons why I like Saquon Barkley, make or break year. Swift did well on that, that team last year, a guy that couldn't finish a season to save his life. Did good on the Eagles, good old line, yada, yada. Um, again, you got to kind of minimize the risk when you're looking at these players. And I like running back round one. I think he's just the best option here. You could go Taylor. Taylor's kind of a boom year, but you don't know as much what's going on with that offense. You don't know what's going to go on with Anthony Richardson. A lot more question marks, right? Jameer Gibbs also as well. You got to contend with a potential lingering hamstring injury, and then you got to contend with maybe they're easing him in because of that. And then you got to contend with David Montgomery, who is slated as the starter, comes out on the first drive. It's going to be really annoying. We've talked about this, okay? So, again, I like Saquon Barkley here at this eighth pick. I, if Bijan falls, I'm going Bijan. But if not, I go Saquon here. 
Now, let's go over the first round. Christian McCaffrey, Brees Hall, Tyreek, for those listening in the car, CeeDee Lamb, uh, Bijan, Jamar Chase, Amon, or Saquon, Jefferson, who I don't like, A.J. Brown, Jonathan Taylor, Garrett Wilson. Again, all good options, all relatively safe, all have a high ceiling, right? But again, you know, what happens in the first round may not, again, I, th- I see CMC going down this year. He's already dealing with a calf injury, right? Paid, incentivized, married, yada, yada, yada. Super Bowl hangover. There's a lot of guys that are going to fall out, okay? Coming off pinnacle years, okay? Jamar Chase, he's like holding in or holding out or whatever they want to call it. Like, I don't know, man. It's just question marks around some of these people. Uh, round two, Jameer Gibbs, ATN, Puka, and Harrison are the first guys off the board. I love Harrison. I think there's a huge ceiling there. But again, I like to go the back-to-back running backs because I'm telling you right now, if you don't go Derrick Henry here, who I like, it's going to be a big fall off. You got, you know, let's, let's, let's go Henry here. <clears throat> And then we'll take a look at who's available round three. So I went Henry. I went Saquon Henry, and I'll tell you who I go round three. Like Michael Pittman comes off, Adams, Kyron, Drake, London, Isaiah Pacheco, James Cook, and Josh Allen. Now I'm going to address the, the the Kyron Williams situation in a moment right now, okay? But after Derrick Henry, you know you're looking at round three: Rashad White, Josh Jacobs, Walker, James Conner. I don't like Aaron Jones. I don't like Stevenson. Save Dave Montgomery. I don't like right. You know, Gibbs is there. DeAndre Swift, I don't trust. Najee, he's slackluster, right? You got all these guys here. I mean, Jacobs is boom or bust, but it gets really suspect, okay? After after Brees, Bijan, Barkley, Taylor, Gibbs, Henry, Kyron, and then I don't trust James Cook here at the end of second round. It gets really, really, really dicey, okay? So that's why I like to get Henry here because, again, great offense, workhorse, no committee. That That's how, how I like it. So Saquon Henry... Uh, 108, eighth pick, right? Overall, Saquon came back at the 205, fifth pick, second round, went Henry. Comes back around to me, starting off the third round, Olave, Hurts, Kelsey, Laporta, Mixon, Achain, who's very boomer bust, and Alvin Kamara. Before I make my pick here in the third round, I want to tell you something. Kyron Williams, this guy was on my podcast. If you haven't gone back, go back a month. He was on the top 10 running back episode. I asked him, should we draft you? He said, is an elephant heavy? meaning yes, draft him, and he's very confident. Listen, I love the guy, but he got hurt last year, and he's a little, they say, undersized. Big heart, great talent, and he did such a great job in the minimal amount of volume he had last year, but the fact that they said, and before they even said that he's going to return punts, you know, full-time, I was telling you that Blake Corm is going to be a thorn, and when they bring in a top running back prospect who could be a starter in his own right, that's got to concern you, and that kind of concerns me as, as well with Brees Hall. And I'm telling everybody, if you draft Brees Hall, this is why I told you to take notes today, make sure you, you draft Braille now as an insurance policy because he's got league-winning upside if Brees Hall goes down. So I think Blake Corm is going to be a bit of a thorn. You know, I, again, the fact that they're telling us, oh, well, you know, Kyron Williams is going to, you know, the coach is saying, McVay, McVeigh is saying like, oh, he's going to be returning pumps all the time. That's that's a problem to me. That that bothers me. And I said this in the 16-round draft solution. Even though he's coming to my summit, Fantasy Sports Summit, he's on my show, he, you know, as a guest, it still bothered me like, you know, Blake Corm is going to be a thorn. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that. At Chain, again, boomer bust. I don't care about a 7.8 yards per carry. They drafted Jane Wright. They've got Mostert there. They've got wide receiving options. They're going to spread the ball around. Ah, chain's a bit of risk. And Kamara here in the third round, very expensive for a guy who hasn't rushed for a thousand yards his entire career and is at the tail end of his career. Mind you, volume could be there. All these guys are safe. I mean, Kelsey's safe, Laporta, you know, this was I was the only guy telling you about him last year. Um, and again, in the 16 round draft solution, if you haven't got it yet, I'm gonna be laying out, you know, who I like as this year's potential Sam Laporta. So guys, very, very important that you grab the 16 round draft solution, okay? So let's continue here, okay? Alvin Kamara, again, I don't trust him. So what do we do here in round three? Now, I really like, I'm a big fan of Josh Allen this year. It looks like he's not gonna fall here on this three turn 12 person league. So we're gonna take a look at who's available at quarterback to anchor our team with an ace quarterback. Now, Mahomes is safe. You could go Mahomes here. I think he bounces back this year. Lamar is safe, but again, Lamar's injury pass kind of concerns me. He did well last year, but is that going to continue? I don't know. Richardson, very, very risky. Didn't look the greatest in preseason. Very expensive for a guy who hasn't really done much. You know, I just, I don't trust him at all. Not one least one bit, okay? So going to this now, I take a look and I say to myself, what do I do here? And, you know, Strout's a safe option in round three because 
a lot of people are going to be going for guys like Nico Collins, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, wide receiver two and Devontae Smith, DJ Moore who's in a three-headed monster situation, DK Metcalf in a wide receiver situation where, you know, it's a three-headed monster. There's a ton of disaster here. Waddle, who's already dealing with an injury, coming off round three is ludicrous. He's the wide receiver two. Why would I make my wide receiver one right on my fantasy team my precious fantasy why would i take a wide receiver two on their team now mike evans is a safe play here i personally have no mike evans stock but he's a safe play if you are looking at wide receiver but i forego all of these wide receivers i take a quick glance at tight end i don't really see what i like because i like ferguson a little bit later so what do i do i take a look at running back I really believe Zamir White will outperform all these guys. He'll outperform Rashad White, Josh Jacobs, I don't know, boom or bust. He'll outperform Kenneth Walker, less competition for Zamir White. He'll outperform James Conner. He'll outperform uh, Aaron Jones. He'll outperform Stevenson, Montgomery. So that's how much I believe in Zamir White. But since I have two running backs and I think he'll fall, I'm gonna wait. So again, I, you saw me do this in my other uh, videos here. Out of all these guys, I think Malik Neighbors has the most upside with less competition. Now you're saying, well, Daniel Jones is throwing to him. Hey, I don't care because I'm getting him in the third round after I've got my two workhorse running backs and I'm getting a guy who's going to get a ton of volume and I think Daniel Jones is better than Sam Darnold. And people are spending, you know, first round pick on Jefferson. So I'm getting a two round discount on a guy that's in the same situation that Jefferson's in, but with a better quarterback, elite talent, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and grab myself uh, Malik Neighbors, because I just think he's the best option here, okay? So Malik Neighbors, I'm going to roll with him here at the three. Brandon Ayuk, Rashad White, Josh Jacobs, and Mike Evans come off. Starting round four, Waddle, Debo, Nico, and Pat Mahomes. So we're back on the clock. I take a quick glance. I want to probably anchor my team with ace quarterback. I missed out on Josh Allen. I want to tell you this. The running, sorry, the, the quarterback I like, <clears throat> if I miss out on Josh Allen, again, there's Hurts, there's Mahomes, all these other great guys, CJ Stroh, but I don't mind waiting for Jordan Love, okay? So I'm going to go back to this uh, simulation here real quick, and I'm going to pull this up here, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to take a look here at running back. I still don't like these running backs. I don't mind going Zamir White here round four, and I think I can get, I know I can get Jordan Love round five, and I know I can get Zamir round five. The problem is I don't like these... I, Listen, listen, I don't like Devontae Smith. I don't trust Cooper Cup. I don't trust DK Metcalf. I think Diggs could be the one in Houston. It's a disaster. And Higgins here, like, look at all these guys. There's tons of wide receivers here and beyond. Guys like Keon Coleman and McConkie, right? If you get 60 rounds, I explain this to you, that you can wait on wide receiver, okay? You can wait longer because these guys, they're going to be efficient. They're going to be safe. They're going to be good. But I can wait on wide receiver as well. Take a quick glance at tight end. I love myself, Jake Ferguson. I can wait on him as well. So again, you may think I'm reaching, but if you have conviction in certain players, go for it. Get the player that you believe in. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Zamir White here in four. <clears throat> and then I'm going to look at Jordan Love here to wrap this up. And I got myself my ace quarterback. I'm going to back him up later with another quarterback, okay? So I'm going to grab Jordan Love here. And just out of curiosity, did Ferg, uh, yeah, Jake Ferguson fell here at the six. That's who I'd get. So I give you a bonus one there. So guys, let's, let's talk about this. This is very, very important that we have a discussion here, okay? What did I do? <clears throat> this is very important. So what I did is I went the two running backs early. Why did I do that? Because there's a big fall off. After these running backs, you're looking at the odd chains who's questionable, Camaro who's safe, Rashad White who's boring, Josh Jacobs who's boomer bust. I do like Marshawn Lloyd later, more explosive, okay? So I forego the wide receiver because there's a ton of other wide receivers you get later. Calvin Ridley's later. Romeo Dobbs is coming off round 10, guys, and he's the one on his team. And what I don't get, which is absolutely ludicrous, is like, why is Jaden Reed still coming off ahead of Romeo Dobbs after the team announced that Romeo Dobbs is the one? After I'm telling you that Romeo Dobbs is the one, which I've been saying back in May, and Romeo Dobbs was the top target getter last year in the playoffs. Yet Jaden Reed and Watson or whatever are coming off ahead of him. Like, get that. Shut the door. You know what I'm saying? Shut the front door. Uh, so anyway, like seriously. So again, you can see what I did. I went Saquon Henry, two safe guys, volume primed, no committee. Then I went the best wide receiver here. Who I like more than a Ayuk, who is again, 
fighting for targets there with George Kittle, and he's fighting for targets there with CMC, and he's fighting for targets there with Debo Samuel. When I got Malik Neighbors and he's got no fighting competition, he's going to get fed, okay? I don't know what else to tell you. Um, again, Mike Evans is safe here as well in three, but I went Malik, came back around, and Zamir White has got the clear path to top five, top 10 running back status. His name is Zeus. He, he basically had, what, 400, I don't know how many he had, 400 rushing yards, 384 in the past four, last four games of the season. The guy crushed a 200-plus yard uh, rushing games. Tons and tons of, I think he had like 84 attempts in those last four games of the season. This guy is set for a monster year. So I, I'm like, yeah, Zamir White, I like him more than some of these other running backs. You know, you got to use logic and common sense, right? I like him more than a washed up Aaron Jones. Like you guys got to think Zamir White, way more ceiling. I like him more than, you know, Joe Mixon who's already dealing with injury. Good offense, but Joe Mixon, it just doesn't have that ceiling. He's never been an outstanding running back. He's been a safe running back, but not an outstanding. So I went to Zamir and then I went with Jordan Love. Now, quick numbers here on Jordan Love. I want to run this by you. Jordan Love actually out uh, attempted uh, CJ Stroud last year. CJ Stroud is going to get an uptick in passing this year for sure. He's going to take a step up. But Jordan Love was so good last year. 32 touchdowns compared to 23 from CJ Stroud. Now, I use CJ Stroud as a contrast because he's coming off ahead of uh, Love and you're getting Love at number 10 amongst quarterbacks, right? And, you know, 32 touchdowns. He only gets better. His, you know, rapport with his wide receivers. They finally got a true running back one. It's going to be a good season for Jordan Love. And again, no matter what, guys, you always, always, always get a backup quarterback. You always pad these running backs. You always get wide receiver depth. And you're always, this is very, very important, guys. I just want to leave you with this. You always want to aim high on the depth chart. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Again, I so again, what I did is I secured the most scarce position. I was able to get an ace wide receiver in there. I got Zamir White to continue to pad my running backs. All workhorses, all no committee, all amazing talent. And then I was still able to anchor my team with an ace quarterback and Jordan Love. And I'm going to back him up later just to be sure and make sure that I'm secure. And then I'm going to start doing a run on wide receivers and, and basically look for a top 10 defense. So again, if you want the full mock drafts, go grab the 16 round draft solution. And I lay this all out for you on a silver platter. Guys, I do not uh, sugarcoat stuff. I, I say it how it is. I help you guys actually win your leagues to put you guys light years ahead of the sheep. All right, grab 16 rounds. Also, there is direct coaching this weekend. If you want to jump on a call, you could direct direct, direct coaching. Uh, I'll jump on a call with you and then also grab, join the Patreon group for in-season waiver wire starts and sits. Join the Fantasy Frontlines, patreon.com forward slash FF counselor. There's the first six rounds for you guys from the eighth spot. Hopefully this helps you guys with the draft, but again, 16 rounds will have all the answers for you as well or book me for a direct call as well, okay? I appreciate you guys being here. Smash it, tap it, slap it. We go year round every day. Hit the thumbs up. I'll see you guys um, tomorrow. It's Friday. I can't believe Friday already. Uh, subscribe and fantasy football is back. I can't wait till the season starts. We'll talk soon, guys. I'm out.